breathe out and be herself. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it definitely lends itself to some pretty good comedy that, that Clive doesn't know and to some really interesting conflict. I want to know more about Clive's personal yeah, life. That's yeah. what I'm really championing in season two is getting behind the curtain there. And congrats on the award that you guys just won. Thank you so I mean, much. What does it mean for you a year later to have had that impact on the fans? And well, it, it is just incredibly flattering that we've only had one season out there and that we've kind of had this incredible exponential like, fan growth. And so that award, we won, you know, Best Fan Fandom and MTV Fandom Awards. And for me, that's, that's not for us at all. It's for them. It's for everybody who has supported this show and kept us alive. And we're really excited that season two, I think, that people are only going to find it more endearing and interesting. So I gotta know, what is the brain there? The brains are gelatin. Okay. Uh, they're like corn syrup, gelatin. Um, depends the different ways that I eat them. Sometimes they have to have additives, but either way, it's disgusting and it's a lot of spit bucket work. So, so you're actually eating that stuff? Yeah, yeah, a lot of the time I am. You know, in, in season one, I drink one as a milkshake, that's the worst. Other times I was like, oh, this is gross, it's fine, whatever. Drinking chocolate milk with like gelatin squished in. Just chugging it for over and over and over again. I really was ill. I was violently ill. Well, can you make that a chocolate cake and throw some coloring on it? Or are you get you on board? Or are you going method? Are you a cook? We'll take you. No, but, uh, the thing is, to find a consistency that looks convincing and that tastes bearable, there's not very many options. So we're dealing with what we have and hopefully they get blamed and eating a few more grains on camera this season. So, so would, that be, would it be that one time when they yeah, I mean, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Sometimes she eats it, and it's just a texture that we don't have to see the brain it's sticking out. But at the same time, it's fun and it's interesting to watch. So I get it. I'm, I'm willing to bite the bullet. So to speak. Between this show and uh, Once Upon a Time, you played a lot of characters that us Comic Con geeks really love. So I'm curious, what kind of geek thing are you into? Are you a Star Wars person? Do you love zombies? What's your deal? My biggest, most embarrassing convention, I haven't told any press this ever, is I haven't seen Star Wars. And <laughs> being at this convention, I have never felt more like a fish out of water with that secret. Like, that's my I'm a zombie secret if I haven't seen Star Wars and I'm at Comic Con. We gotta change so, that. I've gotta change that. Like, when I told Diane, and Ruggiero right that, our writer, she said, like, this is going to really spoil the day because you can't go and do press, you have to go home and watch it. I'm like, no, you're done. So I think coming from the bush in New Zealand, I grew up on the beach, I definitely have missed a few of the, the kind of cult, um, convention friendly sort of shows, and like comics and shows to end films, but I'm catching up. You know what I just watched for the first time last week was Ghostbusters. I hadn't seen Ghostbusters. So that's been really exciting and it got me all fired up for the next one. So that's can you talk 